Hey, this is Dan Kidder. I have got the Typhoon X12 here. I just did a review on that, and we'll put a link to that full review in the uh, description below. But today I wanted to do a video on taking the shotgun apart. So one of the things I talked about in that review was the upper portion of the gun is very easy to take apart. No problem at all. The lower portion is a little more difficult. So we're going to give you a step-by-step -step assembly and disassembly of the Typhoon X12. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is obviously check the gun to ensure that it is not loaded. All right, so we can look in there. You lock the bolt open just like on an AR-15, and you can visually inspect that chamber. Get a little black rifle coffee into me. Some of the tools that you're going to need to take this gun fully apart. Um, one of the things that you're going to need is an extended socket or some way that you can get all the way up into the butt of this gun. So it's a seven millimeter, it's a six millimeter uh, Allen wrench and it needs an extension on it so that you can get all the way up in there. Oh, one tool I didn't grab from the bench. You're going to need a standard Phillips head screwdriver. At the very base, there's a hole you can push in and turn that and unscrew that Phillips head screw in there. And once you do, and I already started this one because it saved time, that butt pad comes off. And that's how you're going to access up inside of there. But first things first, let's go ahead, take the upper part off, take the barrel off. That's a real simple process and that is covered in the Typhoon manual. All right, I'll get close ups of this for you, but there's a nut here. You're gonna unscrew that nut on a tube style magazine. That'd be the magazine nut, but this is a magazine fed, box magazine fed. Um, so that's the gas system. And once you do that, that four end just comes right off. Under that, there is another nut that holds the barrel assembly and everything together. And it has one set of threads and then it slides. And then it has to catch that second set of threads where that first nut was located. And you just screw that off. that aside. All right, once you've done that, you can go ahead and release the bolt, pull back a little bit, and that barrel will come right off. And this part is a little funky, and I'm going to try to get a close-up of, uh, of getting this. It is the charging handle. In order to get that charging handle out, this piece slides, and you have to align the charging handle, the center of that slot with the top of the charging handle. And once you get that aligned, you just kind of wiggle this charging handle out. A little funky, especially trying to do it for the camera. I'll get a close up of that. I'm going to just do it down here. Okay, once you take that charging handle out, you can set that aside. And everything shot out because I wasn't controlling it. All right. So once you've taken that charging handle out, now you can remove the bolt and the entire charging assembly and the spring. That's your recoil spring right there. Okay. So that is as far as the manual that comes with the Typhoon goes. We're gonna take this to the next step and we're gonna fully disassemble this all the way down to the trigger assembly, uh, to take the safety out, all of that good stuff. And uh, that way you can see how to get in there so that you can properly clean this. We're also gonna show you some, the, the trigger assembly's got some really bad machining in it. So we're gonna go in there and we're gonna take a file and some fine grit sandpaper, and we're gonna clean that. So a couple of other things that are gonna come in handy as you're taking this gun apart. Um, 
I like to have some sort of an armorer's block for an AR-15. This is the one from Real Avid. I like this because it has a little magnet spot inside there. So all these little tiny springs, there's even a little ball bearing uh, that I'm gonna pull out and that will hold them in place for me, but it also gives me a surface to punch through so those pins can come through. You're also gonna want a couple of armor screwdrivers. Make sure you're using screwdrivers that are designed for working on guns. They have hollow ground blades on them and they will get all the way down into the bottom of a screw. Um, whereas a regular screwdriver is just a wedge. And so depending on the width of that slot, uh, it's not gonna get all the way to the bottom and it can strip out the top. You don't have as much meat to grab onto, you can strip out your screws. So using armor screwdrivers, these are from Wheeler. Uh, they have a hollow ground screwdriver bevel that gets all the way to the bottom of the slot, gives you that full meat to get engage with and less opportunity to strip that screw out. Uh, they also come in a variety of sizes. This comes in a whole kit. So if the screwdriver slot is too wide, you can mar the finish of your gun or even dig into the metal of your gun. Um, and you're also gonna want some sort of a pick. I like this one that's a little bit curved, okay? All right, so first things first, to get into the lower portion of this gun, you've got to put your extension rod all the way in to the backside and there's an Allen screw in there and I'll get a close up of that Allen screw as best I can. And righty tighty lefty loosey. Okay, and it just breaks loose and it's not a real long screw. So a few turns once you've broken it loose and it's gonna wanna come out. There it is. And there's a little metal plate with it So this goes down inside of there, and then this screw goes right through that, and that locks the top to the bottom. And once you get them, the screw out, you've got to kind of separate them. So you just kind of give it a little smack. There's a little rounded piece here that goes into a receiving spot right there. And you just have to separate them. Kind of reminds me of taking apart a Ruger Mark III or Mark IV pistol. You gotta kind of give it a smack on the grip. All right, so that takes that entire upper portion off and there's really not much interesting here to mess with. Um, you, you've got the uh, ejector here on the side and it's just two Allen screws and I don't really see a reason to take that off. What I wanna get at is the, the meat of this baby right here, which is inside the trigger. I like to be able to get into my trigger, clean that up. Um, you've got a feed ramp in the front that you can remove. Really no reason to, but if you need to, there's a little spring on the bottom. You undo the spring from the peg and it just slides out. Um, but what I wanna get into is the safety and I wanna get into the trigger. There's also a bolt catch here. Uh, for the life of me, I haven't been able to figure out how to get this thing off. It's got some sort of a captive pin that's like molded into the plastic. I don't know how you get that sucker out. So I'm not even going to mess with that bolt catch. Uh, it looks like there's a hole in the bottom that has been put in that metal to drill it and, and tap it and screw it into this body. There's no screw, there's no hole, there's no tap, there's nothing. Um, so the metal, that was a, an option I guess they looked at, but they never actually did. But for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to get that bolt catch out. So I'm not even gonna mess with it. There's no reason for me to take it out. You can also take out the magazine catch. Um, I don't really see a reason to take that out either, but if you want to, you just undo this screw, uh, just unscrew it, the rod comes out, there's a spring under there, and then this back piece comes out. That's the piece that actually makes contact with the magazine. And when you push it, it pushes away from the magazine, allowing the magazine to come out. But what I want to get to is the safety and the trigger. So we're going to get into that. All right. So there's a couple of little pins on here. Well, let's take the safety out first. I find that it's easier to work on the trigger once that safety is totally out of the way. You're going to want to use a little tiny screwdriver tip. There's a little slot on top. Just unscrew that, 
kind of keep your fingers there because there is a spring under that little screw and you want to be able to keep that spring from flying all over. Okay, so you take out that little screw and it's got a little point on the, on the bottom of it and I'll get a close up of that. Um, but there's also that little spring and then there's a little tiny ball bearing in there and that is your detent. So there's a little channel on the back of the safety and that ball bearing will roll back and forth as that safety moves. And then there's two little slots that it can roll into to hold it in place. And so it's kind of clever. I like that better than a detent pin actually. Um, and it's captive in there so it doesn't come out. So you kind of tap it and there's a little oil in there so it doesn't want to pop out too easy, but you just need to get it out of the way. Once you have that apart, you're gonna need a, a little Allen key. And on the face of the safety, you just unscrew that. And I did put Loctite in there because I like to make sure it's gonna stay. So a little blue Loctite on those threads just to hold it in place. Take that out. And the face of the safety selector switch just comes right off like that. And it's keyed. There's a, a notch in the back there. So you don't have to worry about trying to get that line back up again. It, it has a key on it. Take your little Allen wrench, come down a little bit. So your ball is out of the way and that will just push right out. Might have to turn it a little for that ball to disengage and out she comes. See if we can get that little ball bearing out of there for you. Use our punch. And I like that because I can use the back of my block here to put that and I know it's not gonna go rolling off on me. They're concrete soluble. You'll never find them again if they hit the ground. Just like most detents on most guns. All right, so all that holds this trigger assembly in, in position, uh, the, the firing group, is there are two pins, and those two pins have a little horseshoe clamp on them, and you just take your, your pick and just kind of work those out. There it goes. And I just launched it. So just take your pick and gently, and, and I'd put my hand behind it because there's a little springiness to it, and I've, I've launched it across the room a few times, and just kind of pull it away from your pin. You can put that, it's magnetic, on that same holder. And there's two of them here, so you've got to do both. Okay. And put both of those there. So now that that's done, you can get into your trigger. There's a cutout on the mag release button here that allows that pin to pass past it. Um, so I like to take out the front one first and you can use your punch here. This is Real Avid's punch kit. Um, it has a hammer and it has different size punches, it even comes with some tweezers. And I'll tell you what I really like about these tweezers, two things. One is they have a lock on them. So once you grab hold of something, you can lock it in place. And second, they're non-magnetic. And so when you go to put this trigger assembly spring back in, uh, I was using metal tweezers on it. And uh, because they, the, the spring had been on this block, they wanted to stick to the tweezers. So I like having some non-magnetic ones. All right, so you're, you can turn this over, nothing's gonna fall out. And you're gonna need that block to push these parts out. So I start with the front pin, I use a brass punch, and I'm just gonna slide that out. And it should go fairly easy. Might have to give it a little bit of a tap, but it doesn't take much. Oh, see how it's cocked? We need to release that. Don't just pull the trigger and fire it. You wanna hold it, ease it forward. Now that should come out much easier. Yep, just punches right through. Didn't even have to hit it with a hammer. Okay, Hold this in place, kind of push it down a little bit. And you should be able to pull that pin right back out. 
work it back and forth a little, and then take out your hammer. Notice the orientation of this spring. The two long legs come down the front. The little loop in the back comes right up against this notch. Okay. And if this spring comes off, when it goes back on, you want the flatter part to be up against the body of the hammer. So you'll see, I'll show you a close up of this. You'll see the shape of this spring. Um, there's the, the spirals here and this part is on this side of the spirals. So if you put it backwards, the two spirals will be closer. And this is a real common mistake. People do this building ARs as well. They'll put that spring so that that loop, okay, is on that side of the spirals instead of flipping it around and putting it this way. So that's a big mistake and you'll see it will affect the ability of that gun to fire properly. It will start to, to not, the disconnector will not release in a lot of uh, cases. So these come down in the front. When you go to put that in, these are going to actually bend over the top of the fire control trigger uh, assembly. Okay, and that's going to ride back and forth on that trigger assembly. So then you're going to just do the exact same thing. Be careful here. There are three, well, there's four parts if you count the spring. Uh, five parts if you count the pin. So you've got the pin, you've got the disconnector, you've got the trigger assembly, and then there's a spring underneath that that has to line up in a notch in that disconnector, and then the pin that goes through. So kind of keep your hand over it so that you can contain all of that as you push that through. Okay, out comes your pin. And you see it's all connected and still held together by that pin. So the moment I pull this, this uh, punch out of here, it's all gonna fall out. Okay, so this is an opportunity to really look again at how this spring on this trigger assembly uh, is, is set up. And again, it's got the two little loops, two little spirals of, of wire. It's got this loop here, and then there's two legs that come down. So they, if you, if you just follow it, it kind of goes around like that. So when you put this together, you wanna make sure, and it kind of snaps over that that loop is right above the trigger. Okay, right in there. And these guys hang down behind the trigger. Okay. So we've gotten into it. We've really taken this thing apart about as far as you really need to do it. There's, there's a plug on the grip uh, if you undo that screw, it's real hard. It will back that plug out. There's nothing in there. Um, it doesn't go through to the other side. It could be a storage compartment if it wasn't so difficult to get into. Um, it's just a really cheap, uh, probably cheap zinc screw, and it really wants to strip out as you work on it. I wouldn't mess with it. I'd leave it alone. Okay, so that is how you take apart this gun. Um, I'm going to get some close-up shots of some of these little pieces, and then we're going to put it all back together. All right, one of the things you're going to notice here is I get in with this macro lens, is the fit and finish of this is not great. You can see just how chewed up that trigger surface is. And it's not vital that that be, you know, perfect, but I do want to neaten it up a little bit. So I'm going to take a file to that and some fine sandpaper. One of the things I do when I build ARs is I polish all of those surfaces to glass. They're like mirrors when I get them. To do that, I'm going to take a fine file. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of square that edge a little bit. It, it's really bad. 
And I'm, I'm going real light. I'm not taking a lot of metal off, just super light. Just. And I mean, it's, it's almost, it's almost at like a 30 degree angle off square. It's really bad. I just want to kind of square that face a little bit. And, you know, you might say, okay, they, they designed it that way for a purpose, but it, it almost looks like it broke. It, it's that rough and jagged. This will give you a, a little bit closer look at what I'm doing here. I'm taking this profile that's really out of square and it, it's diagonal. And if you look at that against the file, so I'm going to try to square that up just a bit. And I'm not going to remove enough metal to get it totally square, but I do want a sharp edge there. It's going to make that trigger much crisper. Okay. And I'm not going hard, just nice and, and gentle. Just trying to square that up a little bit. Get some of the jaggedness out of it. And I'm almost there. And when I do this on an AR build, I'll use polishing stones and diamond knife sharpeners and I'll use wet stones I even use Japanese uh, water stones but I'm just trying to get some of that edge off of there and I'm gonna have to remove a lot of metal to get that real polished and I, I don't want to remove too much metal because it could interfere with the function of this so I don't have the specifications of where it should be. But then I'm going to take some, just some 400 grit sandpaper. Okay, and I'm just going to run that face just to give it a little more of a crisp, nice, shiny, smooth profile. And I'm, I'm holding this at a very steady angle so that all of that surface is making contact at the same time. All right, so you can see, and you can see that it's really out of square. The outside edges are getting polished, the center is not. So when they machine these, they didn't do a really good job. But I'm also doing this with a soft uh, this is a gun cleaning mat. I think I got it as part of my tack pack, but you can buy these. They're made out of neoprene or, you know, uh, some kind of material that gives a little bit. And, and that's going to, I'm, again, I'm not pushing hard. I'm just riding it over it. So that's going to give it a little bit of cushion behind it. And I don't want to take too much of that off either. Okay. That's going to have to do. And then I just want to go along the top, kind of where I ran that file. I'm just getting file marks out. Just kind of smooth that up a little bit. Look how much of that metal is coming off. All right. That smoothed it up just a little bit. I want that to be like a knife edge. I want that lip there to be real sharp and that's going to give me a crisper trigger i think that's as good as we're going to get on this particular one but under the macro lens you can see just how out of square that thing is so i didn't fix it all together but i made it a little better than it was um, I don't know that there's enough material here, extra material here, that I can totally fix this. 
All right, so we're going to put the safety back in. You have to put the safety in before you can put the trigger control group in because it, it won't go in past that trigger control group if you've put the trigger in first. So there's six pieces that we have to be concerned with here. We have this little spring, this little ball bearing, the little screw. That screw has a little uh, point on it to go into the spring. The safety block itself. Then we have the uh, selector switch and this little screw that holds the selector switch in place. There's a notch, let's see if we can see that here, on the top of the safety where that ball bearing rides and it acts as your detent. It has a flange on it as well, so it has to go in one direction. So it's going to come from the right of the gun in and we want that notch up to accept that ball bearing. Then we're going to take this little ball bearing here, okay, little steel ball bearing, drop that into that little hole, place the spring back on top. There's no right way for the spring. It's not an up or a down type of thing. And then we take the little point on this screw. I don't know if you can see that little point or not. And that's going to go into the top of the spring. and it rests on top of that spring. And then what I do is just hold my finger and I kind of give it a little turn to engage the first couple of threads. This doesn't have to be super tight. It just needs to be flush. It's under spring tension, so it's not gonna back back out on you. Plus you have the upper holding it all in place. So I just want it pretty much flush with the top of the frame. And that's going to uh, not make the safety too tough to operate. If I get that screw too tight, then that safety is going to be really hard. That selector switch is going to be really hard. This is keyed. It has a square notch built into it. Okay. And so it will line up. You want to put it between these two stops. And then you can kind of feel how hard that safety is. And you feel that ball bearing engage positive uh, engagement on that slot then you just take your allen wrench screw i put a little lock uh, tight blue loctite in the threads just to keep it from backing out so i don't lose my selector switch from recoil it's a 12 gauge and it doesn't have to be overly tight just snug it up that blue loctite will keep it from backing out on you and your safety is in place. Now the problem with having the safety in place is now makes it very tight inside of there to get this trigger assembly in place. So we're going to work on this trigger assembly. Some things you need to know. These two pins are not the same length. Okay? So this longer pin goes with the hammer and the shorter pin goes with the trigger assembly. And I'm going to take the spring. The spring isn't tapered. I wish it was. It'd be a lot easier to lock it in place and have it stay there if it was a bit fatter on one end. Um, it's not tapered. It's just a standard spring. Kind of looks like it came out of a ballpoint pen. That goes in place. Then there's a notch right there that slips over that spring and that disconnector lines up, let's see if I can get it here where you can see it, lines up with those holes, okay, and your pin goes through all of that. Your spring legs, the spring goes in front of the trigger, right above the trigger, that loop, okay. Your spirals go this way, and then you want the arms coming off that way. All right, let's see if you can see that. If you put this in backwards, your disconnector is not going to work. So I'm going to try to show you this as best I can. It's a little difficult to let the camera see it as I'm in there because my hands have to be all over the place. You will want your punch. This is going to help you line everything up. Um, and again, the pins are flanged and they want to go from the right to the left. So I'm gonna put my punch on the left side, and then once I have that all lined up inside there, I will use the pin as I insert it to push that punch out the other side, okay? 
To make it a little easier, because it's kind of hard to kick the tail of this back under that safety, you're going to have to fiddle with the safety back and forth to try to get it lined up. But there's a notch cut in that safety bar, and I want that down. So I want the safety in the fire position as I'm trying to insert this in. And I will put that spring in position. And then I will put the disconnector, and I want the disconnector so that that notch is in the back, and that little catch on the disconnector is toward the front. That's going to catch on the back of the hammer, all right, and then it's going to catch on the sear on the hammer. So you've got to hold this all under spring tension, and then you've got to fit it in position. So I find it's easier to get the front down first so that you can get the trigger through that notch okay and then I've got to pick this up it's about my tenth time doing this and it hasn't gotten easier any of the times I've done it it's just a lot of little parts that have to go together in the right order and there we go. Okay. So I have that in there now. I'm holding it in place with my finger. Now I'm going to take my brass punch. I'm going to start it. And I want to line it up with the first side of the trigger. And I just want to catch it. And that's going to just kind of hold that in place and keep it from moving around too much. But you've got to push that spring the main spring on the trigger down to line that up with the hole. There we go. All right, so I've just caught the side of the trigger. I have not gone through the disconnector yet. That's our next challenge. You've got to kind of push down and move back the disconnector while keeping it from coming out of that spring. There we go, okay. And I've gone through, and now I've just got to come out this hole here, and I can kind of torque that around until I get that lined up, just like that. My punch isn't long enough to come all the way out. But what that does is now I can take my shorter pin, remember you have to use the shorter of the two pins, I can push it in here, I can start to work it. As I push this out, it might go flying across the room, that's okay, because it gets me through to the other side. All right, that's my little trick to help line that up, because that's a pain in the butt. So, so you want this loop to be back against this catch, all right? And that's gonna lock there. These two arms are gonna bend over the trigger. And it's real difficult to get that all lined up. I'm going to use my punch to try to get that in the hole while I push down that spring. And it's real hard to line up. Real hard to line up. They've put some raised ridges in here, and this has to fit just between those raised ridges. And I don't know if they put that in there for added strength. I can see the hole. I can't keep it in place to get it lined up. So this is going to take some fiddle farting. I'm so close. If you have a gun vise or something that you can put this in to kind of hold it in place so that it's not sliding around on you, that will make your life easier. I have a, a vise block over there, but I can't film and put it in the vise. All right. We're now going to reattach our little 
clips, but before we do that, we want to make sure we've got this all put back together the correct way. We don't want to let this hammer go flying forward and strike this uh, bolt catch. It can damage the bolt catch. Then we want to test the safety, make sure that it is engaging properly. And we want to see that the disconnector in there is working as well. And everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. So now that we have everything working the way it's supposed to, we're going to go ahead and put our clips back on. These are just little moon clips. You don't need your, your pick. You're just going to use your punch and just kind of line them up. If they're sitting flush on the side, that's perfectly lined up with that little groove. And then just take that and you'll hear it kind of pop. Boom, click, it clicks in. Take this one, line it up the right way. And you might want to keep your thumb kind of there just in case it slides off, it doesn't go flying across the room and you have to try to find it. Boom, clicks in. And you'll know they're in position, they kind of rotate when you push them with the punch. And those are back together, your trigger assembly is all back together. All right, so now all that remains is to put the lower and the upper back together again. It's just the reverse of what we did to take it apart. Um, I'm gonna cock the hammer back so it's kind of out of the way. I'm going to take this upper, I'm going to take that little divot that's right there, insert it in there, but I've got to get the back end first, okay? So I'm going to kind of work them together like so, okay? Don't have to slam it or smack it, just kind of fits together. And then I need to put my bolt back in place, all right? So here's my bolt. and my little plate. And then there's also a serrated washer on there. So I wanna make sure that this plate is facing down because there's a channel for it to go in inside. And I found the easiest way to do this is to put it back on my tool like that. Kind of angle it up guide it in so that that piece stays and I'm going to take this tool out so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about okay then I'm just going to tighten it up I want it snug it doesn't have to be overly tight I don't have to torque way down on it just nice and snug okay pull that out so those two parts are now back together again. And before we reassemble the upper, I think we need to get into this gas system. So let's take that apart. This is your gas system here. And there's a couple different parts to it. There's only one part I'm really gonna take apart and that might be just to clean it out a little bit. The top part of this, you can get it apart. Uh, it's very difficult. It's under a tremendous amount of spring tension. There's a really strong spring up in here. But you have to get a rod through there and you have to put a lot of force on it. You have to lock this down in a vise so it can't spin. But this bottom part, the silver part here, you can just kind of wiggle that out and that's going to come apart for you. And so what that does is it gives you, you'll see a couple of gas checks there. And that'll give you the ability to get in there and clean that out every so often. Um, put a little oil on it just to keep it functioning real well. And that's really all you need to do on this barrel. Just kind of push it back in and that's it. So reassembly of this thing, just the opposite of what we did to take it apart. Really basic, really simple. You're gonna take this carrier group here. You're gonna reattach your bolt to it, okay? You'll see there's a firing pin right here. You want that against the back of the carriage and there's a little slot there and it just slips on just like that. Put your spring back over your gas tube. Set this up. 
Take this, slip it over the gas tube, hold it all together as you drop it back into the chamber, in, into the uh, receiver here. The pin has a little groove and that little groove goes up and you'll see it aligns with this. This will move back and forth on the bolt. Okay, so you just have to get that kind of centered. Take that, put it in place, work it in, and it just snaps in place. And that movement locks that in place so it's not gonna come out. So it works just fine, okay? Then you're gonna take that nut there's two nuts, one that doesn't have a hole in the top and one that has a hole all the way through. You're going to take that nut after you put the barrel on. Huh. All right. So once you have that in place, you're going to take your barrel. You're going to slide it over, line it up with your bolt, pull down. That barrel will come down into place, kind of hold it in place while you release the bolt. Then you've got two nuts. One's got a hole in the top, one doesn't. You can take the one with a hole in the top. You've got two sets of threads here. You're going to screw that one onto that first set of threads. Then you've got an un un unthreaded or non-threaded area and you're gonna go all the way down and then you'll feel that detent start to catch. Turn that until it's tight. Then you just take your forend, slide it up over, and there's a couple of little uh, reliefs cut into that receiver. Just snaps into place. Then you take your other nut, okay? And you'll notice that it has the sling loop on it and that wants to swivel, wants to turn. So you just need to kind of hold that to a little recess in the uh, forend. Hold it there as you turn this nut. Once that nut engages and comes down, it will seat that sling point and then you'll feel those bite and engage and your gun is back together. And so then we, of course, we do a function check anytime we take a gun apart and put it back together again. We do a function check. All right, we can pull the trigger. Lock the bolt open. Engage the safety. And we know that that gun has been put back together again and is ready to take out to the range and get some more rounds through it. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope that uh, you check out our other video that we did. We'll put a link in the description on this shotgun, a review of this shotgun. A lot of things I liked about this shotgun. There's a couple things I didn't really like, but there's a lot of things I liked about this shotgun. So check out that review. It's on the Sportsman's Warehouse YouTube channel. And uh, this is Dan Kidder. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If it has, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends who might consider getting the Typhoon X12.